listen to the vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes, and I'm very privileged to have Mr. Alex Boylan here, who has a career both in front of and behind the camera. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, one of his shows and also going to talk about getting your kids ready for college, picking a college and all those good things. So, Alex, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thanks for having me here, Kyle. Uh, uh, Really good to be here. Yeah, I've been been very blessed um, to spend a lifetime, you know, in front and behind the camera, producing, hosting, creating many different shows. Most of my journey on the planet has been travel shows. So filmed in, you know, probably 65 plus countries around the world. But as my niece tried to figure out where to go to college and I was helping her with that extremely challenging task and overwhelming task for that matter, um, is where the idea for the college tour began and just said, hey, you know, we need to tell the story of each one of these institutions across America, really with the hopes of, you know, helping young people along with their parent, uh, parents figure out you know, where is the best place to go to school? And as, as we know, with between inflation and just travel costs and all that, it's, it's a hard thing to kind of, so now from the comfort of your phone or your TV set, you can travel the country and explore all these uh, amazing colleges. <laughs> uh, I happen to be reading your, your bio and I saw in there that you traveled the world without spending a dime. Yeah. Yeah. That was a show I created called around the world for free. Um, and yeah, the whole premise was at that point in my, my career, you know, I'd done a lot of quite a few travel shows and food shows, and um, I just wanted to tell real stories of real people. And so the best I could come up with, and this is pre-Facebook, this is YouTube's just coming out on the market. So this is a almost a little ahead of its time, but yeah, so I set off, fortunately got CBS behind the, the project, um, but it set off to tell stories of real people, real places, real circumstances. So I basically couch surfed around the world. So season one, I was the guinea pig. So I was the kind of host or um, I would, guinea pig's better than saying host. Uh, yeah, we started off live from the CBS early show, I traveled through the Caribbean, uh, through the West Coast of South America, through Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Chile, up the East Coast of Africa, from South Africa to Tanzania. Wow. Um, Kenya. Anyway, across Southeast Asia, then across the U.S. And so, yeah, forty thousand miles. I think my uh, season one was, and then we did two more seasons, each with their own hosts. And your life will never be the same after you take on a project like that. Hey, you are living the dream, getting to travel <laughs> and all. Man, that that would be a blast. And one uh, was a season two of Amazing Race. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the beginning of it all because I mean, prior to that, I was international business major, uh, working in Boston as a market analyst. Didn't love the job, didn't love the career path, and that was right at the beginning. I don't know if you remember, but that you know that first summer that Survivor came out. I, I, remember. I remember it coming on. I actually yeah. never watched it, but <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was a summer. I think it was two thousand, but anyway, whatever summer that was that came out. Uh, man, I was hooked. I I was just in, I was like, this is the first time I, you know, prior to that, the only thing our age group understood about reality was like real world and road rules on MTV. There wasn't reality TV. And so when I started watching Survivor, I was hooked. And then I was very fortunate. I I was back here in Boston with um, one of my best friends I grew up with since kindergarten and uh, pop-up came up like race around the world. And so when we applied for Amazing Race, we had no idea what Amazing Race was. You just kind of, only thing you had in the back of your head was Survivor was the only thing you you had, you know, was on television that could give you an idea of what these shows were like. And uh, just being on that show, traveling around the world, you know, there's a thousand people on the production that pull off that production. And I, of course I wanted to win, but most importantly, I was just blown away by the job. Honestly, I couldn't stop talking to the producers and and just was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my, whatever you guys are doing. I was young. I mean, I was 22 when I was doing The Amazing Race. So I was, uh, whatever these these people were doing for job, I was like, I want to do that exact same thing. So it really exposed me to the world of stories and travel shows, and et cetera. And so, yeah, that was the beginning of it all. So I tell my age because I remember when MTV played music videos. <laughs> 
<laughs> Me too. 100%. That was my youth. <laughs> yeah. We're probably around the same age. So, yeah. I was, I think I was 11 or 12 years old when MTV came on the air. I actually got to see the very first video, which was Video Killed the Radio Star. I totally remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that. yeah. But um, you, um, you're doing a show about college. Mm -hmm. And I know there's going to be somebody out there either listening to this or watching it and they're curious about going to college or maybe they're in college and they still haven't quite figured things out yet. And there's a lot that uh, kind of encompasses around all that. So what what do you do to maybe push them in the right direction? I think what we do, we tell authentic stories of each one of these universities and colleges. So, you know, whatever the demographic is, maybe you got a younger brother, maybe you got someone in high school, maybe who knows, right? So it's just kind of let, letting people know that this show exists. Um, and, and the best place to, you know, it airs on Amazon, airs on Tubi, airs on 17 different channels, but going to the college tour, you can find thecollegetour.com. You can find all the information and free classes, et cetera, et cetera, to try to figure this, this journey out. But I think how we structured the show, we really wanted to tell authentic stories. That's the goal here. Mm -hmm. And so we attack this show like we would attack any other reality show. So, you know, as soon as we're partnering up with the, the college or university, we cast the show <laughs> just like we would cast a reality show. And so, of course, we're trying to figure out whether, you know, so a half hour show, there's 10 stories in an hour show, there's 20 stories. And each one of those stories is going to be driven by a real current student. That's the that's the beauty of what the show is all about. These are real students telling their real authentic stories, um, which allows you know students out there that maybe you know maybe you live in Florida but you really want to go to school in the mountains. Maybe you live in Colorado but you really want to go to school down at the beach. Maybe you want to be in a big city. Maybe you want to be outside a you know a big metropolis. Maybe you want to be in a rural area. I mean, there are literally thousands of colleges and universities from community college trade schools, technical schools, big state schools, Christian schools. There's so much that goes into what is my vibe? What, who are the people that I want to surround myself with? Uh, and it's such an important decision because I always tell people, A, you know, if you can go to school and there are ways to get into school, um, it is going to be the fabric of your life. These will be your best friends. These will be your colleagues. Um, this location is going to be tied to you for the rest of your life. So this isn't about four years of your life. I think it's about the next 40 years of your life. So it's a really big decision when you think about choosing this college or university and what is right for you. And so that's what this show is all about, you know, is we want to tell the story of each and every college university. Uh, once again, whether it's a community school or a big state school, and we've done everything. I mean, our, I'm very proud of the fact that, you know, we're shooting season seven right now. And the biggest thing for us was just having a being diversified as we build this series. So if you watch episode one, it's Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado. That has an energy and a vibe. And it's a small campus in Durango, Colorado. And in that same season, you're going to see Arizona State University, which is a massive university, you know, big state school, big time sports, and the University of Connecticut compared to the Delaware Valley universities compared to the Florida Tech. Each one of these schools is different in a million different ways, but they're all amazing. And so it's just about, we just hope where that, where that first step, as you try to figure out where should I go to school by watching the show, we hope you'll learn about different majors, learn about different locations, learn about different cultures on campus. And as you kind of, you know, go through your high school years and you decide which schools maybe you want to go on to campus and take a, you know, a more in-depth look, that we're just a piece of that journey for a young person trying to figure out their path to college along with their path to their career. Well, to me, there's only one college and that's UT, so. <laughs> well, we did UT. We did UT in Austin, yeah. We've, we've got a lot of great Texas school. I mean, Texas is a great state. And uh, University of Texas, Austin, that is, uh, it is uh, an, an impressive and a really great school. But, but we've also, you know, we've done T Texas Christian University, Baylor University, oh, yeah. uh, uh, University of North Texas. Uh, we've done a lot of different schools in Texas. Lots yeah. of great schools there. And we were like right in between Texas State and UT where we live. Okay, cool. So I don't know if you've been to Texas State, but uh, that's that's an impressive campus too. 
been down Texas State, but we also did St. Edwards, which is in Austin. You know, that, that that's a beautiful campus and beautiful mm. school, you know, uh, as well in Austin. So what makes y'all decide what college you're going to feature when you do each show? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, you know, we're, look, we're looking at you know, 200 universities, 900 community college. There's a lot of schools. So um, we have tried to scale up production as best as possible, um, mm. but it's going to take us a while to get through, you know, to get through all of them. So right now it's all about, there's a lot of factors for us. I mean, A, our goal as the college tour, we, we're here to tell the story of every single one of them. Mm -hmm. obviously there's lots of different factors of timing time of year this is it's not like the college tour just comes in and we just voila we make an episode it's six months to make an episode of, of um of the college tour so you know we're we're lockstep with that university from day one so there's a lots of it's more like timing you know and uh, infrastructure and, and how to because the things that we need to do to get through the pre-production the production the field shooting etc cetera, etc cetera, to make that episode so really we're um our, i'd say our biggest thing is me and diversified making sure every season has small schools christian schools big state schools you know just making sure that we have a well-rounded because when you watch watch the college tour and watch a carson newman or grand Canyon university which are christian schools compared to columbia college which is a super progressive school in downtown chicago we are authentic to the stories that are out there and to the and to the culture of that campus and so we're, we're, we're really blessed to be in America, right? I and mean, we have so many oh, yeah. amazing institutions here uh, in this border. And so it, there's something for everyone here. And so for us, it's it really, it's just about staying diversified. And, um, you know, hopefully in, you know, hopefully in a few years here, we will have told all those stories. Now, do, you, do you show like the party life side of it too? Uh, we show more like campus life, I would say. We're not we're not going to get into the party <laughs> side of things. Uh, I, I just I don't know who's benefiting out of that. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty of things on YouTube <laughs> kids can find. But like, oh, yeah. you no, know, for us, I think it's more of a, I think we're deeper than that. You know, it's more of, a, you know, you know, having fun at college is certainly a, an aspect for for potentially some young people. But I think there's there's a lot more important things for us to be using our screen time on. And so but we do always talk about the campus culture, the campus life. And, yeah. you know, compared to when I went to school, you know, 20 plus years ago, the amount of activities, organizations, things to be involved with are through the roof right now at university. So it's really cool what, you know, you can get exposed to and get into while you're at, at, at college or university. Yeah. When, when I was growing up, our, our idea of college was the movies that we got to see like animal house and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I think it's important for kids to maybe leave that stuff behind. I mean, I know you got to blow off steam in between semesters and things like that, but focus on what's what's real, what's important. Stay away from all that garbage. Yeah, I, I agree, and I, I agree. You know, it's, it's there's the, once again, this is the, these four years of your life. It's amazing time of year. It's it's like you're you're in this transition between most likely being under you know family or relatives roof right you're you're mm -hmm. you're not fully independent typically. And college is this nice transition between that and the real world. And when you get into the real world, we all know it. Welcome to the real world. You're gonna really need to pay bills, and life changes dramatically. And so that's why the, this whether it's two years, four years, wherever your path is in in the journey of higher education it's such an important one and it's just teeing up once again it, you, you're giving yourself a, the best chance possible to be successful in life <laughs> and so um yeah it's it's you know really and, and you know as you look at costs and inflation you know colleges aren't cheap you know and uh, and um and there's lots of different ways there's lots of scholarships we won't get into all of that but it is you know this is an investment and i 100 percent agree i think it's much better for and i and by the way, I think this next generation, and I don't know, I'm not, I'm not in campus and hanging out there on the weekends, and that's <laughs> not what we're showing. But I think, I say this a lot, I think this next generation is amazing. And I feel like it's common for every generation to always look at the next generation and be like, oh, you're not as good as us, right? And I think that's just common throughout time, history. <laughs> but when I, what I have seen, um, by doing this show. And I've been, you know, we've filmed 68 episodes so far, been on a lot of college campuses, met a lot of college students. They're incredible. 
what they're thinking about, what they're tapped into, the, the sensibilities they have, how they want to um, make this planet a better place. That, it, that I feel like they're more evolved, much more evolved than when I was for sure in school. And um, and of course, when we were in school, we we're looking back of like the animal, you know, that generation before us. And so I think, yep. I think the of course, you know, having fun in college is part of the part of the part of the you know part of the journey. But I think it's just it's there's so much more to be involved with. There's so much more to spend your time on, and you're just you know the the speed at which technology and things are moving and communication and it's uh, it's a really exciting time I, I think to be on college campuses. I look to the next generation and say, be better than us. Yeah, that Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And then what's amazing is, okay, you see what goes on on social media and all that garbage. And it's not reflective of a lot of these kids that are coming up. They actually are getting the work ethic of their grandparents. But you don't get to see that on social media. Yeah, so everybody thinks that all these kids that are on social media or what you know the representation of this generation and it's not i yeah you know, i couldn't agree more and i think you know our message to younger people it's throughout time it's only getting more and more competitive and that's sheer because mm -hmm. the population keeps increasing there's 7.8 billion people on the planet so from my me coming out of school was honestly it was easy, it was a little easier to get a job and find you know get in and and uh and i think if you keep going backwards you know people always had a job there was always something, there was always something to do and i think you know as as time is going on and not to get into like the super you know macro level here of the planet but it, it is getting more competitive and so mm -hmm. more and more i think students need to and i think they're just naturally you know their work ethic and, and really figuring out also their passion and their purpose. And that's another, you know, there's a lot more jobs. There's a lot more industries, a lot of cool things. So I just, it's yeah. fun. I, I look at these young people. I'm like, man, I'm jealous because of what <laughs> you're able to go study now. I mean, there's, I'm on certain college campuses and they have like drone degrees, you know, there is really? just, Oh yeah. I mean, college is really adapting very quickly at the speed of which technology is moving at. They have to, wow. Um, that's the job, their job, right? And so I would say, you know, when I was going to school and I went to Jackson University, loved my time there, loved being a dolphin, but it was a lot, it was a lot of books and studying, you know, like principles of economics and business statistics, et cetera, et cetera. I think back to my same university now, it's much more experiential. You're getting your hands dirty and doing case studies. And like, so I think what's really cool about universities, they have access to the technologies and the different things, medical, whatever it is that you're studying, you're gonna be most likely getting your hands a lot dirtier than you know we did 20 years ago in college. And I think that makes college a lot more fun, a lot more practical, and you're just better prepared for the real world when you get out. And I think of what would it have been like when I was in high school to have the technology that we have today back then what i would have become because i mean it to, to see what my grandkids are doing on computers it just blows my mind i'm not i got a seven-year-old grandson or excuse me eight years old now um he he gets on and he makes his little videos mind you he, he's autistic but he makes these little videos puts them up on um what was it the TikTok and the kid ends up with 10,000 views for the things he knows how to do on it. Incredible, I, right? You know, I, he can actually show me how to work my phone before I know how to work it. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's for sure. You know, the, the, like technology is, is it grows exponentially. And um, yeah, it's really it's, I think it's I, I just think I, I think our, our future of the world's in really good hands. I, I think these next students are their the thoughts and just where their heads are at is, is a really good place i'm excited to watch it unfold now speaking of have you run across one of these kids that you thought man this might be the next elon musk a, a bunch of them really <laughs> yeah totally yeah there's um i mean there's just there's i mean that's what's so fun about the show is just every story is told by a real student so Another great thing is to look, you watch the show, you, you want to have faith in not only, you know, 
the US, but you know, around the world, because many international students we feature as well. Um, you, you're you're going to be smiling at some of the what where these kids head. I don't want to call them kids. Where these young people's heads are at, and yeah. So we've um yeah we we have. There's been a lot of engineers. You know, there, there was a, there was a student at University of Illinois, Mahir. I talk about him a lot, uh, but he was from India and just loved pulling things apart and putting them back together, and just was an engineer at by at heart from a young age and was re, it was re, around covid he was reading about one of the professors and and some of the technology they were doing and he had already in high school in india come up with um a technology that would wipe away um surface level uh, of the covid virus and he connected with this professor and he ended up going to university of illinois it's a great story of like where you know something like he saw what he was passionate about and you know behind the his story is amazing watch that episode but behind the scenes you know i was talking to him a lot and that, that kid's gonna change the world you know i mean he is he's just is naturally fired up about technology and helping people and uh it was amazing to watch what he was doing as a as a young kid in high school and now what he's learning at university of illinois and who knows where that student will be once he graduates man that that's gives you some kind of hope because the way the world is now and the <laughs> what's going on you you're like oh my god where is it? this country's going downhill the world's ending and yeah stories like that it's like maybe there is some hope in, for the future you know kyle i i couldn't i i believe not only in this country but in this world that we live on we got this one planet we're all on it and uh i think we say this a lot if you want to like see the side of things because mm -hmm. there's more bright there's more light than there is yeah. darkness going on fortunately our media there's a lot of things driving divisiveness in this country yeah. but i don't think that I, I am in a different city in a different culture in a different state twice a week like that's my life and i see it all and you know what i see I, yes we have different cultures and yes we have different beliefs and yes we have a, but that that diversity is what makes this country and this world awesome Exactly, and I think as you get on the ground level, and what at least what I see, I don't feel that divisiveness. You know, I feel people are good, and you watch these young people; they're, you know, they're they're coming into a world where yes, we are all in echo chambers, and we're all on social media. And there's a lot of information flying around, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not a different time than it was, you know, 20 years ago. But these these young people are taking it in stride, and every one I them there, they're kind. They want to do good. <laughs> um, that's a, that's a that's a huge thing. I mean, almost every student I've met along the way is the biggest thing is they they want to make the place a, they want to make this planet a better place. Mm. And um, you know, I I gotta tell you, when I was graduating college, I my head wasn't there yet. I was just too immature, honestly. And so um, I don't know. I I I have I, I feel like we're in a we hear a lot about the problems, but we don't unfortunately hear about the goodness and the great greatness that's happening, not only in here, but around the world is just not being shared, but it's vastly out numbers, um, the bad stuff being talked about. When that's the thing is people, I guess it's like an addiction. They, they like to hear the, the bad stuff that's going on. They don't want to hear the good stories. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous, you know. One of the the, the top uh, subjects for YouTube videos is uh, true crime. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like you say, and I've said this, I don't know how many times when I've come on, I can go into my local store and have a conversation with just about anybody in there, and people smile. Yeah, talk, and and, and you know, I I have to walk around with a cane. And but I'm not an invalid, so you know I, I can open the door for myself. But to have, you know, this young kid run up and grab the door and open it for me, that warms my heart. You know, that's that's special. So there there is goodness out there. It, 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 I I love hearing that story, Kyle, because I, I unfortunately we're in a society at least right now where like the sky is falling, cells, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and so it's just being driven a lot more. But the reality, I always tell, tell people, it's like, well, go inside your grocery store. And what's your experience like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I live in Venice Beach, California. I have every, within five blocks, I have every religion, race, creed, color, like you can imagine. And walk in that grocery store and 
everyone's smiling and everyone's polite to each other. It's not the experience I have on the ground level um, is not what I'm being told in a lot of different avenues. And I think that's unfortunately pretty sad. And we've always throughout history, throughout time, there's always bad actors, there's always bad people, but it's a small percentage compared to the overall, um, I believe, you know, niceness that the average person is out there. The average person, you know, I love doing around the world. Why I loved around the world for free because that show came out not long. I mean, it was a little bit after, but a lot was came out of after 9-11, which is a tough time for us yeah. in the country, right? Um, uh, unfortunately, you know, but I, that brought our country together, you know, I felt like at that time period. And, yes. but there was almost like this scary, and I, I'd been very blessed to travel the world. My dad was a pastor, so I, you know, I, was, I would, I just travel a lot and saw a lot of interesting places around the world as a kid. So that around the world came out of that, for me going through 9-11, people being scared of the outside world. And I, I, I'd i seen the outside world. And so I, I that, that whole show was developed because I was like, it's not like that. You know, whether know. you're going to the favelas of Venezuela, you know what I mean? The rich, the poor, whatever. I, I mean, I was proof of it. I was this human Olympic torch couch surfing my way around the world. Never had a problem, you know? Smile and wave yeah. goes my way. The average person, not only in America, but around the world, what do they want to do? They want to take care of their family. You know, they want to do, they want to good by far the vast majority, but um, you know, the, the small, you know, the, 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 the people that do cause problems are ignorant or, you know, whatever there it's, a, it's a small part percentage of the population in this country and around the world, but they get the most, you know, they get the most like news stories and they get the most headlines, which is unfortunate. Oh, I know it's so aggravating because these, and it's a small majority that gets on social media. They look for every reason in the world to, to divide us. But yet when you go into public and you meet real people, we find things in common to talk about. Um, I went back to uh, where I grew up. It's where my mom and my kids live. It's in a little place called Baytown, just outside of Houston. And we had to run into a grocery store we come in and, and uh, I'm, I'm diabetic. So we try to find like keto friendly and sugar free stuff for me to snack on. And we went down this one aisle and was kind of looking and there was a, a an older lady there and uh, she just happened to be black and she was trying to pick stuff out. And then uh, I said, well, you know what? I do the same thing. Let me suggest this, 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 and this. And she was so thankful just to, you know, that I stopped and I, told her about all these things that she could eat because she was diabetic as well. Mm -hmm. and, and we ended up in the same line at the checkout. And then somehow we got into talking about vegetables and I was telling her, yeah, I've got a little garden that I like to grow my own vegetables at home. She goes, oh, I do too. We got into this great conversation. There was no talk of race, religion, gender, nothing. It was just two people sharing things in common and having a, a, a just a great time, you know? And I love that story. And I think that that happens everywhere it more does. often than the opposite happens. And unfortunately, it's just, it's, uh, it's what makes this, I mean, this, I love this country so much and I love it because we're so diverse. That's what makes it so cool. I tell people all the time, it's like, it would be really boring if we all thought the exact same thing. We all look the exact same way. That's what and, I'm um, saying. I go, we're, we're really, we're blessed to have the diversity we have in this country. And um, and I think the average person, and I, I love how you said finding common ground, because I think in general, of course, we're going to have, people are going to have differences of opinions. But if you can start with finding common ground, can we start there? Because guarantee you, most people are going to find more common ground than they're going to find. And instead, not fight, right out of the gates about the, you know, the some, one thing that we maybe we do different, different uh, disagree <laughs> on. Let's find the thing we agree on first. And if everyone did that, yes. man, the country and the planet would be in a little bit better shape. Oh man. Uh, if we would actually look to our, our children, like our, our small children and how they treat each other. I totally. think, man, I think this would be a, a whole different world to see yeah. two kids they have okay, so they're not the same color, but they can still sit down and play, and they they just have a good time, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't. Uh, yeah, I love it. No, it's funny when we talk about young people. I I I really recognize. Well, when I, I went to I lived in Brazil when I was uh, around fifteen, 
but I've seen it with Around the World Free and many other shows that I've done. I love how internationally um, a lot of the young schools, it's school uniforms. And it was interesting. I was down in the British Virgin Islands doing something and, and they were like, it was just so bright. It was like these bright pink, like kind of collared t-shirts and all the kids and all these, you know, there's different, there's Islanders, there's expats, kids, there's all kinds of different, you know, uh, uh, different types of students that come from many different backgrounds there. And I was like, oh man, I love these pink uniforms. It's so, so cute. And the pres the principal of the school is like, you know why we do that? I was like, why? He goes, we don't want, there's some kids here whose parents are doctors, other ones, you know, their parents are, you know what I mean, are really destitute. And we want all the kids to feel the same. And that, and I was like, oh man, it's so smart. Makes sense. You know, I, I think I, I wish, I've said a lot to friends. I'm like, I wish here in the States that was more of a thing in the public schools because it equals the plane, even more the playing field of like, we're all wearing the same, you know, clothes going to school. Um, yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> it would have made it easier to get ready for school, wouldn't it? <laughs> Especially someone like me who's like the worst fashion person on planet Earth and doesn't care about, I wear the same thing all the time just because I don't, I, I can't be bothered with it. Yeah, it would have would, uh, would helped me out a lot. Well, you know, that's what Einstein did. He all his clothes were the same, so he wore this the same. It, it was the same ensemble every day. Yeah, Steve Jobs is a lot like that. They say too. <laughs> yeah, he didn't. He won't have to think. He he won't have to think about one extra thing during the day. It's like that's what I put on. So, have you thought about maybe catching up with these kids uh, later on in their careers to see how they're doing? Uh, yeah, you know, we'd love to. We we just creating um, this LinkedIn page for all these students. Um, and so we're trying, you know, obviously our, our main goal, we're a production company. We got lots of episodes to do. So, you know, that is, that is mostly where our energy goes to, but these students are incredible. And the biggest thing that we want to create is community. Um, and I think that's what's happening with the college tour. And so we have just started this LinkedIn page for each one of these students, whether they've been, they're a featured star in an episode, they're an extra, if they've touched this episode, their episode in their school, you know, they're brought into this LinkedIn page where we want them to share information. So we're at the beginning stages of that and how that, where that will go, I'm not exactly sure, but I think that's kind of our idea is, first off, it's like, you know, you're a student in Texas and you're moving to New York City. Well, we've done, we have students over there. Connect with them because they'll be able to help you out and guide you a little bit or vice versa. So that's the biggest thing is just creating community. So these students are talking across the country. Um, and then hopefully, because I mean, we have some amazing stories. I mean, one of our, one of our students at ASU, she just won Miss, uh, I want to say USA, I believe, um, or one of those like high end ones. Uh, we have a, girl, a young girl from Florida Tech. I mean, she is, I mean, there's a lot of big people behind her. I mean, they, she might be like, she's pushing to be the first woman to go to Mars. I mean, she, it, it is, uh, so we have some amazing students out there. So we're going to have to figure that out. Right now, we got a lot of colleges and universities to tell their stories, but. It'd be great to follow back up because these students, what they're going to do, they're going to, they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to change the world. <laughs> so would you say that the show is more of documentary instead of a reality? Uh, it's a great question. I would say it's more, well, it, it, how am I going to describe this? So, I mean, I'll walk you through the production process, right? Okay. Because when you watch the show, you're, it's a real student and it's really their story. But in order to get that, to make that for television, you know, we have, there's two months of pre-production that goes into that. So let's just say, Kyle, you've been casted on the show, okay? And you're, we're gonna tell the story of film and television um, at Iowa State, wherever it is, right? So that's, what, that's our job, you know? So of course, first we're gonna get some key bullet points that are like key information from the film and television, you know, program from that, you know what I mean? Hey, listen, Kyle, we need this to be incorporated in your script because this is kind of some of the key messaging. Mm -hmm. But this is your story, Kyle. So the first draft of the script is written by you. It's not written by, it's not written by staff writers at the college tour. It's not written by the university now. It's like, and we've held true to this because if I, I know it's gotta be your story, Kyle. Like if it's not your story, you're not gonna feel, there's gonna be no heart, it's not gonna be real. So it starts there. Now, of course, then, you know, our producers and the colleges, we're, we're going to fine tune that and we're going to make little TV tweaks that we need to in order to advance the story or to, you know, tell the story of this or and what we have B-roll on. It's all kinds of different things that will go into what gets locked, but that's your story. And so then by the time you go through your media training and now we're on location and we're going to film you, Kyle, delivering it. 
you know, we're, you're, you're delivering information that you helped craft. So I don't, I don't, you know, I'm trying to think of like, what would I even categorize? I've, I've been calling this show infotainment because I think if you're not even looking at college or university, you'll love, like you need, you need to feel good about where the world is. Watch the college tour. You're going to be like, man, we're fine. These <laughs> students are amazing. Um, but obviously there's a tool there. Like, I mean, that, this was designed once again, because my niece couldn't figure out where to go to school. This is a tool for young people in high school. This is a tool for loved ones, parents or high school. I mean, we have 60,000 high school counselors that are tapped into the college tour right now because they're overworked. Worked, and now we have this resource to help inspire their next, you know, their students at their high school. So high school teachers and counselors and all this that are that are using this as really information, but it's done in a way that we understand the young people absorb content. You know, these stories are about minute and a half, minute 45 each. So we're it, the show moves and moves fast. But once again, and it's done tele our, you know, we're, we're all multi award winning producers. So it looks great. But at the end of the day, it's coming from a real rawness and a real realness. And, and that is something that we will not bend on um, at all because it would just ruin the authenticity of the show. And I, I don't think people realize what really goes into these reality shows. I, I actually did a pilot for A&E several years ago. And number one, you go through the audition process. And so they decide if they're going to use you or not. And it's still another year, year and a half before we even got started filming. We get get there and it, it's so funny that they, they call it reality. I mean, in a way it is because it's not scripted, but we walked into the same door probably a dozen times, <laughs> <laughs> drove into the same parking lot a dozen times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Hey. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing nowadays with reality. It has so many. Con there's so many different types of reality shows. So it, you, there's so many sub reality within the reality. So for us, it's it's just real stories. And how can we use our skill set to tell those stories? You know, of course, 99 percent of students, you know, when we're there on location, don't it's not like okay you got your script done let's do this and they haven't been on camera before you know they're, they're not used to all that so it's our job to make them you know make it look flawless and, and bring it to life with b-roll and shoot all kinds of stuff so yeah i mean you're you're looking you know we're shooting you know we shoot which i would say this is rare for any show and i i pride ourselves on this because you know we we there's a lot of work that goes into what you see on screen for a 30 minute show we shoot for five days to get that 30 that 30 minute that half hour episode oh, that's yeah. even in television that's a lot i don't i don't think i've ever worked on a show we've had that many days typically travel show two max maybe three mat and like maxing it out um but we want to do the show right uh we want to make sure every student has the right like we have enough time with each one of them to be able to get out what we need and and lots of little pieces to put it all together so we um you know we, we we really take our time in the field and i think it shows on screen and then a lot of folks think that you get a a reality show that you become rich overnight it's like no it doesn't work that way <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, this show's not about, you know, there's no, you know, this show's not about money. It's not about it's about uh, I know service, it's a different but in the reality, I hear you. It's like in the old reality world, yeah, I always tell people it's like, no, you gotta get you almost need a hit for five years before you'll yeah. start seeing real money because you got you're probably gonna be under contract for a little bit. You know, I've done enough shows where you're gonna be under contract for a little bit. And at first it's everyone's kind of putting in a lot of time and effort. Who knows if the audience is gonna like it or not. And then it's got to become a hit enough for you to, by the time your contract's done, that the network and everyone needs you and advertisers. And so you almost, yeah, it'd be interesting if you go through like, uh, but yeah, you, you almost need to get to like that five, six year. If you're a hit at that point in time, then you're probably starting to make some money. So big and bad, people don't realize it's big gambles, big risks, lots of energy. And most, I tell people, it's like, I love this business when change your friend in the world love telling stories, but you know, it's, there's a lot of heartache, no matter how anyone who's worked in television film, man, you got to have some thick skin because it's not like every day you got a winner on your hands. It doesn't work like that.
Oh gosh, man! I'd say we waited a year and a half when we we got the film for it was almost three days, and well, then you have to wait. It was another eight months by the time they got through doing their editing and everything else that they wanted to do with it, just to have them tell us that uh, no, that we're not going to do this at this time. I'm like really, you know, that's felt like two years of my life was wasted. <laughs> yeah well this is where i would look at it what a great experience kyle it was right? a great experience oh, it, yeah. but i i know that pain kyle like i know <laughs> that pain so well and i i try when i'm talking to young people that are in film television it's, it's like listen there's a lot of different avenues to go and, the, and there's a lot of it for your personality what are you looking for but on the because you're you're getting pulled into like the development the early stage i got an idea you know and that goes to show how hard it is to take, hey, I have an idea. And imagine the infrastructure, the money that was spent, the time from God knows how many people just to get that idea to stage one or two, just to have yeah. at that point in time, like, yeah, it's not for us now. Let's revisit this in a year. Happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I felt yeah. so but really bad for my buddy because it was it was centered around him. And, and you know, I, I was all on board about you know, being a part of this project, trying to make it the best that I could. And then to have that taken away. And mind you, that was the second one that had gotten from the, you know, the talking about stage to actually getting into doing the work. And then both shows, they turned around and ended up tweaking it a little bit and giving it to somebody else. So I felt more bad for him than I did for yeah. myself. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. Like, I, I mean, I know it more than you can imagine. I, I tell people all the time, yeah, I have wins under my belt, which, which I'm very blessed and appreciate, appreciative. And the older I get, the more appreciative I am. But I have way more losses, Kyle. Yeah. Like, just way more losses, way more ideas and things where you just, and, and many, you're getting people to, because that's just the nature of the beast. It's the nature of how this show works. You get people together, you got an idea, and I've, Oh man, I, I got more shows of more like exactly what you just said. I had this, I had this amazing show with these group of guys out in Miami, and this is ten years ago. I was like, this thing's for sure gonna sell. It's their time, and we're filming them. And couldn't get it off the ground. You know, happens all the, happens. That's why I always tell people in this specific scenario, expect that this is. If you're having fun in the process, try to have fun in the process because the chance of this thing ever going anywhere, man, it's like one percent. <laughs> so slim you know so but you, but here's the deal you learn a lot in that oh, you know yeah. what i mean for the next one and to mentally prepare you never know because what is resonating with the audiences now is not going to be the same thing two years from now and so stuff comes back all the time so all that work is not um not in vain well we'll say this he did get on the billion dollar buyer have you ever seen that yeah. Tillman for Tita. Yep. And he won. Oh, and great. It was, uh, I don't, I don't know if you watch it, but it, they were designing one of those French style restaurants or whatever in Tillman's new hotel in downtown Houston. And they were looking for whoever to design it and all that. So him and his partner, they won. And on top of that, he let him remodel one of his restaurants on, uh, it's it's uh, called the Kima Boardwalk. You, you know, so if oh. you ever get down around Houston, go to Kima. Oh, yeah. That's fun. <laughs> I love it. Hey, it's that's all like you said, part of the game. Yeah. So uh, any other plans for the future as far as television or just maybe doing something different? No, I th I think right now it's like I really love the college tour. I mean, it, as we were just talking about, it's hard to get something that a works. Um, but this has been really special. I I, I just you know I, I I don't think, and you know just understand the people behind this. I mean, Lisa Hennessy, I mean, she helped launch Survivor and executive produced biggest with big franchises. Burton and I ran travel shows. Mike Murray run Adrenaline Films and was the DP on like season one episode one of survivor i mean we've been in the business a long time nothing's better than working with colleges and universities it is and nothing's better than working with students and sharing those stories and knowing that this show not only is fun to produce and not only is, is a great experience 
but we're helping out this country by, by, by telling these stories, we're helping young people make better decisions and hopefully help them find a path. And I don't know of anything else that's better. And I've done a lot of stuff, cool stuff in my career. I just can't imagine like what beats this. So I'm here, to, I'm here to stay. And, um, you know, right from here, I, I get up and I'm, I'm in Boston right now and I'm driving out to Western New, New England university. We have a crew out there filming that episode and I'll be on camera tomorrow morning. So it's like this, I, I love, I eat, sleep, drink college tour and love every second of it. So do you have any advice for someone either getting ready to go to college or someone's out in the real world right now? Yeah. If you're, if you're, if you're thinking about school, I would go to the college tour.com and I would take the, the class because that class is a video based class all pulled from segments of the show. And so that will really help you start thinking about how to think about college. Like, and because we break the class very simply down, let's talk about location. Let's talk about campus culture. Let's talk about the type of camp college it is. Um, and then let's talk about majors. And I think that will get their minds thinking because I think, you know, at least for me, I would, you know, when I was coming out and, and my, both my parents went to college, but like, they weren't like, I don't know, when I was going, I was just like, oh, pick a school and go, You're right? And, and I was really lucky. I played soccer and I got attracted by Jacksonville University and I loved the school and loved the, the city and end up going there. But I think now, hopefully the show is just helping connect dots better and making young people more educated and their families more educated on what's available and hopefully just creating better matches out there. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really yeah, appreciate awesome. you coming on. Um, and you said that was the college tour.com uh, college tour.com. You can get all the information there. All right. Is there any social media link to it? Yeah. And all, and I always say, cause it's, you know, there's, you know, there's there, we have Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and all of those things, but you can find all that at the college tour.com. So I don't make the wrong, give the wrong one for the wrong social <laughs> channel. It's better to go there and you'll find everything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link in the description so people can click on it and go straight to it. Um, I appreciate that, man. I, I wish the best for you. And thank you, Colin. Let's get a cup of coffee when I'm in Austin. I come to Austin quite a bit. Bert oh. Roberts, one of the executive producers of the college store, one of my best friends. He's there in Austin. So I come there quite a bit. Let's grab a coffee. Oh, definitely. Would love to do yeah. that. So uh, and you're always welcome back to the show. I appreciate that. That's awesome. And everyone out there, if you are new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. I hope you please subscribe. And for those of you who are regular to the channel, thank you for your support. And so until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.